Great. Tyler, thanks. There's been an, an outpouring of thoughts after we learned of the passing of Vermont Lake Monsters head coach Pete Wilk. NBC5's Jack Main caught up with members of the Lake Monsters today to remember the legacy that Pete leaves behind. Jack. Brian, Pete didn't spend much of his time in Vermont and didn't even amass most of his legacy in the Green Mountain State. But Pete Wilk is a major part of the reason why baseball is still being played at Centennial Field. The future of Vermont Lake Monsters baseball was up in the air after the club lost its minor league baseball affiliation in 2020. But the club was revived in the Futures Collegiate Baseball League, and that's when Pete Wilk came on board. I want these kids to have fun. I want the fans to have fun. It's a great game. Coming off of COVID, I, I think everybody's excited to be out and about. And uh, it's a wonderful facility in a great town that's, uh, from all indications, rabid about their baseball. And have fun they did in 2021, taking the Futures League Championship, the Lake Monsters' first title in any league since 1996, with Wilk being crowned as the league's manager of the year. Pete Morgan Brown did, did such a great job uh, recruiting the players. And I'm not sure this isn't the single best place to play summer baseball in the entire country. And I, I mean it, and I'm, I'm well-traveled. And, and so, you know, obviously Pete, was a large, large part of that. You know, we are now going to be missing a, a really important chunk of the organization. The Monsters made it back to the championship round in 2022, but the following offseason, Wilk was diagnosed with glioblastoma, a very serious form of brain cancer. Wilk underwent treatment in the offseason, but returned to the dugout midway through 2023, and the organization raised $20,000 to help. You know, from our standpoint, it's the least we could do to help uh, whatever we could, you know, to benefit the Wilk family and, you know, and hopefully we can continue to do that. Pete fell in love with Vermont. Uh, his wife, Aaron, and his daughters uh, also fell in love, Casey and Reese, and, uh, you know, they're part of our team forever. Pete loved his players, who he pushed to be the best version of themselves, including Colby Brulette, who reached out to him when he was transferring to a new school. After my, my visit here, I texted him and I just said, hey, do you, do you have a minute to chat? Like it went really well. I, I want to tell you how it how it went. And he called me 30 seconds later while he was at a radiation appointment. And I was like, coach, what are you doing? Like you're getting treatment. Like why don't I like I said, when you have a minute, like don't call me right now, like when you have time. And he's like, no, I want to hear about it. How did it go? And that's just kind of the person that he was. Wilk also sparked one of the most iconic nicknames in franchise history. Um, but it was kind of just one day we came to the field and he saw me getting interviewed. Maybe it was by you or by some of the other press. And he was like, no, this guy knows everyone. Everyone wants to talk to Jimmy. He, like, he must be the mayor. And then that kind of just sparked it all. So Between his sense of humor and love for baseball, Wilk made many friends during his time in Burlington. His 86 wins in 129 games is the winningest percentage for a manager in Lake Monster history. In honor of the two-time manager of the year, the Futures League will debut the Pete Wilk Award, given to a player who overcomes tragedy in making it back to the ball field. I'm honored. I'm uh, incredibly touched by this town and these people in this organization. Um, unbelievably special. Unbelievably special. Uh. It's unclear how the Lake Monsters will memorialize Pete, and as for pressing forward on the field, Matt Fincher will serve as the interim manager with minicamp starting up in mid-May. In the studio, I'm Jack May, NBC5 News. Tribute, Jack. Thank you.